All right, boys, welcome back to another video. The first thing I want to say is that this is not aimbot. It's very similar, but it's not. This is fully usable. A lot of COD Pro players are actually using this right now. I have not seen one Fortnite player using this, and I'll explain why. But it's not bannable. It's not illegal. All it does is that it, it, it tweaks the way your mouse works. We're going to get into it. But well, make sure you do subscribe if you're new and you find this video helpful. On top of that, make sure you do hit that like button, man, because it helps me. You have no idea how much that does help me. And also, drop drop a message down in the comment. Bring some positivity to this video. Uh, let me know how your day's going. You know the usual stuff. Literally, I don't mind. I'll answer a question if you let me know how your day's going. I'm being dead serious. I will hop in that comment section and have a full-on conversation with you. You know me, if, if you know me. But let's get into it. All right, boys, so we're going to start off talking about the linear transition model. This one is what a lot of players do use. This is the most common one. But my profile that I have set up is a jump curve, which is way more overpowered than this. But it does take a lot more time to get down. So I'm going to explain this one first and then I'll explain my one. But I will show you how to do this in the software and I will show you how to do the other one in the software. So the video will look something like this. I'm going to explain it to you right now, right here about the linear model. Then I'm going to show you how to download and set up the linear model. Then we'll jump back into creative and I'll show you how to do it my way. And then we'll hop back into the software and I'll show you how to set it up my way. That way there's a nice flow to the video and you can just get the first part if you want and leave. But I highly recommend if you want to get even better aim, you stick through all the way till the end. Now, let me just go over to this bot and show you how this works. First of all, you can see that I'm, pretty, I'm still pretty consistent when it comes to building, okay? Building and editing is fine when you play with this. It doesn't really affect it. All it affects is your... your your slow to fast acceleration. That's the only way I've set this up. So it's like a, it's not a gradual increase. It's more like a sharp increase and then like flat, if that makes sense. So your sensitivity feels a bit more sticky, especially the way I've set it up at the start. It feels more sticky with small movements, but then it speeds up drastically. I have it set up so it speeds up, I think at 1.5 times, but you'll see in the software, I'm not quite sure on that because I'm recording this before I record that part. So I'm not really sure because um, I've wiped the whole software so I can explain it. You'll understand in a minute, but look, basically what this does is it allows you to snap to this guy's head a lot faster. So when I'm looking over here, like my sensitivity, when I make big movements, my sensitivity is going all over the place. Okay, It's very hard to control, but when I'm making small movements, I can easily kind of just like, kind of just keep my, my, my crosshair on him now. It's, it's not as good as the one that I, I will be showing later, but this one, like it's hard to explain without a hand cam. It's like a slow down effect. Not even, it's more like a speed up effect, but it starts off like with small movements, super like, super minuscule. Like I, I can be very slow. I can have such a slow kind of smooth play style, but then out of nowhere, I can just like turn mongrel and go ham. So it's almost like it's allowing you to play on two sensitivities at once, but it's very smooth. As with my one, it allows you to play on two sensitivities, but it's a lot less smooth, if that makes sense. And it's a lot more, a lot more sticky. So I'm going to show you how to set this up in the software real quick. And then I'll show you how to um, do my version. My version is way better. Trust me. But anyway, let's move on. All right, boys, I'm currently down here in the bottom left hand corner of your screen. What you're going to need to do is download raw Excel. This is the first step that you need to do. OK, now to download this, you can find the link in the description. I've got you guys covered. On top of that, you're going to need to create a document. To do that, you just got to go new and then you got to go down here and get a text document that or you can get a pen and a piece of paper. You're going to need to write down a lot of different values. Trust me, it will get confusing. On top of that, what you're going to need to do is you're going to, need to get a calculator and um, because we're going to be adding up a lot of things and dividing a lot of things. Now, when you download this, it's going to look like this. You're going to open it. Then you're going to find raw which is the application. And what you're going to do is open it. Now, I already have a, a version of it open, so I'm going to pop that open right now. And this is what it looks like straight out of the box. I'll move. No, I won't move this. I'm going to leave it because I'm going to open up my, my, my text thing here and a calculator over here in a minute. So it, it kind of looks a lot confusing, all right? It, it kind of does, right? I'm not, I'm not going to lie. So we're going to move this, this, this uh, slider all the way back to the start because I was messing around with it, okay? So when you move this all the way back to the start, you're going to notice that we're going to get this blue line, all right? Now, this blue line is very sensitive for me at the start. Um, and this, this little, literally, this red square right here, this is how much I'm moving my mouse. So if, if I like move this over a bit and I start moving my mouse, you can see that it's it's flickering by. That's my polling rate working. Now this might look a bit different for you because obviously, you know, I've had this software before. I reset all the values to default just so I can explain it to you. So mine should look exactly or if not very similar to the way yours is looking. Now what we're going to do is we're going to pop open our, our calculator. So I'll get that for you right now. Boom. There's a calculator and here's the steps and everything you're going to need. So over here, I have a thousand DPI. I recommend you do this on a thousand DPI for the most effective run through of this and I'll make it way more consistent. I have explained why I'm using a thousand DPI in a separate video that will be up on top right now. It will be down in the description and it will be linked at the end just in case you want to understand why we're using a thousand DPI and why it makes your aim better. 
on top of that you're gonna to need to find tree sensitivities tree in-game sensitivities now for me i'm playing fortnite this will work with any game possible but my actual sensitivity is 5.0 this is currently what i'm playing on in game that's what it's set to on my x and y it's five sensitivity now your highest sensitivity is going to be depending on what you're comfortable playing on so this is physically the highest i can play because if not i'm going to start whipping shots i'm going to start editing wrong this is the, the, the highest i'm comfortable playing then what you're going to need to do is do the same thing but for the lowest sensitivity you're going to need to find something where you're comfortable playing on it but it's just not realistic to play on it. Sure, you're going to hit every single shot on a 3.5 cents, but it's going to be very inconsistent for building and editing um, in the game of Fortnite because it's too low. You can barely do a, do a 180. So obviously, a super low sense, a standard sense, which is what you play on, and then something a bit higher. The closer that these values are to your base sense, the more accurate this is going to be. So don't go trout put on like a 70 in sensitivity because that's physically the highest you can play be a bit more realistic with it okay put it closer to the five because the closer these values are to five and um, with a decent gap you know you don't want to put it like five and then the lowest you can play is 5.1 that or like a like a 4.9 like it, it won't work that way you need a bit of a gap but just not too big of a gap you know just find the right gap that can be taken different ways i'm so i'm, I'm moving off this topic okay Part one is to divide your low sensitivity by your normal sensitivity. That's why I've got the calculator, because you're going to get more than likely a mad decimal. So we're going to implement whatever we get for doing this sum in our sensitivity multiplier, which for me is currently on a one. So our low sense is a 3.5. So let's plug that into the calculator. 3.5. And then we're going to hit divide by our normal sense, which is a 5.0. So 5.0. We're going to hit equals. Now we get a 0.7 so it's not a big multiplier it's going to be a 0.7 so what this should do is actually put our sensitivity on a slope now i don't know where that's gone okay we're after losing it there we go so it's actually on a bit of a slope because it's on a uh, negative multiplier which means it's getting slower the more we move it so it's on a negative acceleration now when we tweak this acceleration it's going to work in a way that when you move your mouse very small like this it's going to be super stiff and precise when we're moving it normally like this, so when we're building and editing, it's going to run normally. It's going to be a very flat line transition between, um, it, it's not like a big Excel. That's what's what I'm trying to say. It'll, it'll make sense when it's on the graph in a few minutes, but I'll, I'll pull it up right now. We have to do the second step first. Second step involves you going in here and putting this on linear. You can use other ones, but they're way inconsistent compared to the way linear works. So when we put on linear, we hit apply. You can see this whole graph changes and it starts angling upwards with a sensitivity multiplier of, multiplier of 0.7. So it's no longer a negative multiplier going down, it's, a, it's going up, it's positive. And we're going to turn off gain. Very important that you turn off gain, I'll show you why later. But this is actually what makes it more of a, of a curve like that. This keeps it a very straight line and it doesn't really show when it's on a graph like this because we don't have big boosts on yet. So when we do put big boosts on, you're going to see it'll curve. But with gain off, it will stay at like a straight line, it won't curve. And that's what we want for consistency. Now by default, this will be on a very low number like this, we don't want that. So anyway, this is 0 0.005. We just want to get one, rid of one of those zeros, basically. And the best I recommend playing on is 0 0.09 and hitting apply. You can see this makes the curve a lot more aggressive. And um, I can actually pull this up a bit like that. Now, see the way we're on a 0.74, the curve is a lot more aggressive. That is part of the second step. Well, obviously, part two right here, divide your high um sensitivity by your normal this is what we're going to put in for our, our cap output now I'll, I'll have to explain this very very carefully because you might do this wrong so make sure you're listening our high sensitivity is a 7.5 so we're going to clear this and we're going to go 7.5 and then we're going to divide this by our normal which is a 5.0 so what we should get is a 1.5 this is where things get tricky okay a lot of people will just look at this and be like damn i've got a 1.5 i'm chilling let's go it doesn't work like that what we have to do is get this value on the side to be a 1.5. That's that's where the struggle is. And because this graph is so small, you don't know where it's ending. So we have to kind of keep skipping with it right now. And like you can see, this is not willing to really move with us. And that's as high as the graph can go, I think, if I hold this down, maybe. No. See, it gets very tedious, but you have to see where this exact curve is. So for us, we need to get this, this exact point right here onto a 1.5. It's currently not there yet. So what we need to do is adjust this slowly and, and carefully. And um, so we're going to go for a 1.8. And that's going to change the curves dead end again. And we're going to just keep adjusting it. Now, it, it is very tedious. But trust me, when this, this is set up, you're going to have some really nice aim. I'm not even capping with you. So we need to just keep finding the, the, the dead side of this. 
what I might do is skip ahead into where when I found the dead side because I'm not going to have you guys like sitting here watching me for the next 20 minutes trying to find it. All right, boys, so you can see I actually found where the curve straightens out. You can see it's very faint, but it straightens out here. You should probably have a more aggressive curve on yours where it literally just like ramps up and then straightens out. And um, mine was more gradual because of the way um, I, I set up my sensitivities. That's what I'm saying. The gaps here that you have, depending on how big they are, depends on how long that gap is. Now, obviously, because I'm playing on a thousand DPI, the sensitivity is a bit different. You know, it's a bit, it's a bit that the way it's scaled is weird because if a high DPI and I have a high sensitivity, it's going to take a long time to even out. Whereas if, if you have a low sensitivity and a high DPI, it, it will even out very quickly. Now, I'll hop in game and show you uh, another example of, of another method that we can do to make this aim even more sticky. I'll do that right now and I'll come back here and I'll show you again how that's actually going to work out for us. All right, boys, so we're in game and I'm going to show you the second sensitivity curve. This one is the one that I'm personally going to be using and I haven't showed you this one in the software yet. This is just an example of what it does. Then I will explain it in the software. Now, this one has a few more problems than the linear one. That's the reason why I showed the linear one first because anybody can just put that on their, their PC, download the software and run it. And it's way simpler than this one. This one actually takes a bit of time to develop muscle memory for because it's something that you've never been used to before and this is what's called a jump curve so what a jump curve does is it basically is two sensitivities in one and there's a very sharp transition period so for example the way i have it set up is that my, my my small movements okay so when i move my mouse very very small now i'm on a high sensitivity don't get that wrong i'm on a thousand dpi with a five sensitivity that's that's pretty high okay it's not slow anyway but I'm still able to, with this software, it allows me to stay literally on the edge of anything, like dead center right here. I'll keep my crosshair dead center, okay? Dead, literally, I'm sprinting right now, and imagine if that's a target, okay? Like, I, I'm literally able to track anything. Like, I'll use it on this bot over here, and I'm, I'm telling you right now, it's like a magnet. I'm not even messing. It literally feels like aim assist. So, watch what happens. Like, when I go by this guy, okay, I, I can literally keep my crosshair on him. Now, most people can do that. But like when I come around the other the other side, like I can still keep my crosshair relatively on them. I haven't gotten it down yet, but I, I feel like with a lot of practice, this is the most overpowered thing ever, okay? Because I, I'm able to just like just snap, okay? Snap snap around. Like I won't even look at them, okay? Left hand peak as well. And it just feels so magnet magnetizing. I don't know if that's the word. But like I, like you don't even have to like pay that much attention. Like you can just like it, it makes it very easy to acquire the target, if that makes sense. It's, it has like a slowing effect. Mouse acceleration usually speeds up. This one feels like when you move it less, it's like a, it's like a steep curve. It, it doesn't speed you up; it slows you down. And even when it comes to building, like I said, it's a sharp kind of transition period. So when I start building, it, it, it's 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 pretty easy to, to to build still. It's not like I'm playing on a low sensitivity because when I move my mouse very like aggressively, what what it enables me to do is it speeds up the sensitivity with the acceleration. So it has like a set period of where the acceleration kicks in. Now this is something that a lot of COD players do use, like I said in the intro. This this particular jump mode right here. And it, it can actually be confused with hacking because people have it set very aggressively. So they'll be aiming here and then like it snaps over here. That, that's how you get that kind of snap aim if you don't want to develop it. It's using software like this. And I, like I said, I'm going to be running this one probably for the rest of the season. And I'm not playing comp, but I'm telling you right now, if you're willing to put the time in, this would make a difference to your game. It, like it doesn't, you can see it's barely affecting my edits right now. If I'm, I'm more consistent, because it, it slows my sensitivity. So if I have to make a slow edit, like it's very easy to make minimal movements. Like, you know what I mean? Like I can still be hella consistent right now and have super control over a, what's usually a high sensitivity. And it can still be a high sensitivity. I just haven't set it. So if that makes sense. So I'll show you this, this POV from the software. And it's, it's pretty nice, boys. I'm not going to lie. All right, boys, so we're back in the software right now, and I'm just going to show you every change that you have to make to get my profile to work. Now, this one, like I've said a thousand times in this video, is way better than the linear one. But what you need to do is just put it on jump. So you're changing from linear to jump, and this is a jump curve. Then what you want to do is hit apply, and you're instantly going to notice that that dropped a lot. So it's a lot more sticky. But if we kept scrolling to the right, you would notice like it's not going to work right now, but this literally spikes up at some point. So it, it's like two sensitivities in one. So when you move your mouse very like small, it's um basically like very precise. Like I, like I just showed you in that example. Basically, to get this working perfectly, you need to put it like this, literally exactly like this. So when I put it on smooth 0.5, now, if you don't like the feel of that, you can change it. But that's basically the transition period between both sensitivities. So 0.5 basically means there's like a window where it's super sticky and then it like speeds up. Okay, now if you put that on 1.0, it's still back to the linear curve. You'll still have a bit more of a sticky feel, 
but it's not as uh, precise. It's not as um, predictable. It's not as, what's the word I'm looking for? Consistent. It's not as consistent. Then when I put the input on 40, that basically means after kind of a threshold of 40. So basically when we go along the line right here, so we can see that's 13.8. When we're at a threshold of 40 along the x axis or so along the bottom and um, that's when this will stop working so obviously like you can see us faintly like you, you can see the red thing kind of beam by so it's very easy to hit 40 with the jump curve on and um, that's the threshold so after you you're moving like at 40 percent of your sensitivity the other 60 percent is going to be on a faster sensitivity so that's kind of how i explained it before and um, way back when when i made an original an original video on this for cod is that it's like a 40 60 split so the first 40% of your sensitivity is very slow and sticky. And then the other 60% and the second 60% to make it a full 100% um, basically is a very fast sensitivity or not very fast. It all depends on what you put here. And this is your multiplier, your output. So this is what you're left with after you pass that 40% threshold. So mine actually transitions into a 1.5 very sharply because this is set to 0.5. So 1.5 basically means... My sensitivity is in game is a five, but realistically with the boost applied that that is on this because of the the actual multiplier the acceleration, it brings it up to one point five. Now I'm fully comfortable with that because if I just had this on one, it would be very like slow sensitivity, fast sensitivity. There'd be no like, I guess smoothness in between. Now look, like I said, you can try this out for yourself. You might prefer the linear one, but I'm telling you right now, the jump will be 10 times better once you get it down. Now, hopefully I haven't made this video too long. There's one more thing I want to say before I completely end this video, and that's, do you want me to release another software video? I already have it made. The software is way more overpowered than this, and it's literally like aimbot. And if you want me to release it, just make sure you break the like goal of 25 likes. On top of that, go down to the comments below and tell me what method are you going to use? Method one, the linear method, or method two, my method, or are you not going to use this software at all? On top of that, this video right here that's on screen will definitely help you become a way better player. On top of that, I'll see you in the next video. Have a good day, boys.